Hi fans of Brianna Nolan Books. I want to tell you about my new book, Marriage is Murder, the Dora County Special. And I'm going to read a few excerpts from it so you can kind of see what it's like. And if you want to buy it, it's on Amazon under Kathy Buchan. B-U-C-H-E-N, Marriage is Murder, the Door County Special. What would Audrey do? That is a good question. Recently, I found myself asking, what would my unflappable idol, Audrey Hepburn, do in the middle of a wedding day murder? Would she run or would she stay and solve the case with her imperturbable cool firmly intact? I'm a classic film buff. I love all the classic films and the big film stars of days gone by, but Audrey is my favorite. It all started when I attended the wedding of my friend Brooke Trout. His name is Brooke, but I call him Brooke Trout. He finally decided to marry his girlfriend Holly, the quintessential high school mean girl of your worst adolescent nightmares, or should I say the iconic mean girl. She should have her own statue in the wax figure gallery of Hollywood movie Villainesses. How Brooke could love Holly defies logic. She is the type who, when you see her and ask how she has been, always says, oh, I'm just fabulous. Yes, Holly, you sure are. Holly is one of those people whose favorite word is I. It's always about her. The way she talks to Brooke makes me want to barf. She has a weird way of pronouncing the letters R, L, and T that sounds like baby talk. Sorry, Mr. Brookie. I hope I didn't hurt your widow feelings. Widow owed me and widow owed you are going for a widow drinky poo. Brookie poo and Howie poo is going for a widow drinky poo. Major eye roll. Oh, you crazy webbit. Honestly, she sounds just like that. Sorry, but it makes me feel like boofing up my lunch. I read once long ago that Mary Queen of Scots talked that way, especially to men and that it was a part of her charm. Every time she talked to a man, she appeared to be talking baby talk. Was it a minor speech defect or was it feigned? Charming to them may be sickening to me. In fact, Holly's seeming speech defect seems to disappear entirely when she talks to a woman or when she is making her numerous demands or giving Brooke his marching orders. Leave it to her. Men salivate over Holly like Pavlov's dog at the sound of the bell. Why they do is a complete mystery to me. Her looks are all fake, and she has the personality of a rabid wolverine. The birds stop singing when she walks by. She casts a pall over every gathering, and the shy and secure girls get nervous if she comes within ten feet of them. They're waiting for the nerd jokes soaked in vitriol to come pouring out of her mouth. There have been times when I wished that I had a roll of duct tape I could paste over her lips. My friend Crystal, the punk rocker formerly known as Constance, who has been my best friend since we were 15, suffered social media humiliation and body shaming at Holly's hands throughout high school and college. Holly and her coterie of pals treated everyone that way, but Crystal was singled out for special attention. Crystal has glowing dark chocolate eyes, long, shiny straight black hair, and gorgeous smooth creamy brown skin. She has a beautiful figure, which is somewhat zaptic, like the movie stars of the 50s, so she buys her clothes in the big and tall section. That is a serious offense in the eyes of a girl like Holly. Holly thinks that bird-like bones and spending one's time a single cookie shy of anorexia is the ideal. She loves to persecute any other woman who doesn't meet her specifications of beauty, which means about to disappear into thin air. That was how Holly spent high school and college. As adults, we have seen evidence of Holly's intact mean girl attitude, even if Brooke Trout has not. A more narcissistic bridezilla than Holly would be hard to find anywhere. And I know that one day Brooke Trout will wake up and realize that his marriage is due for a short shelf life. But whom am I to meddle with true love? When the romance dies a natural death, I will never say, I told you so. Well, almost never. Maybe a wee bit when Brooke comes crying to me because his great love has crashed and burned. At any rate, my best friend Crystal, the punk rocker formerly known as Constance, and I, Tabitha Nolan, otherwise known as Tabby, 
found ourselves attending Brooks' wedding on the huge Door County estate of Brooks' rich Uncle Brian. That estate is outside of Egg Harbor and includes 20 acres of rolling hills, woods, gardens, and one mansion with pool and tennis court. The house has four floors, seven bathrooms, eight bedrooms, and every convenience you can pick up. We were decked out for the occasion in our best clothes. Lots of makeup, high heels, and our signature streaks of purple haze in our hair. Is he napping? Check on him, I said. You do it. No way. Top tacos. I'm not doing it, said Crystal. You do it. I gave her a deeply exasperated sigh. <sighs> then I pulled the newspaper off Rex's face, checked his breathing and his pulse. Again, I felt the cold clamminess of his skin. I'm, no I'm noticing the cyanosis of the lunula, I said. The what of the what, said Crystal. Crystal, think, you're a nurse. I'm seeing a blue tinge at the base of the fingernail near the cuticle. You know what that means. Some type of poison, just as we suspected, said Crystal. Is he dead for sure? I mean, beyond the shadow of a doubt. I think I like him better as a corpse than I liked him alive. He has the same personality, but he looks much nicer this way. He's deader than a doornail, I said. Deader than a dodo bird. And then I watched Crystal faint straight away onto the plush Avastan carpet. Don't faint, I yelled. She ignored me. What followed was a scene straight out of a classic slapstick comedy movie. I ran around the entire house and grounds of the estate in fast forward looking for Brooke Trout. He was nowhere to be found, just as before. I could not find anyone. Where had they all gone? I returned to the library. There was Crystal sleeping peacefully on the floor. Uncle Rex was gone, just as before. What in the world is going on here? Now I was sure that Uncle Rex had been murdered. If he had keeled over of natural causes, why bother to move the body? Maybe someone didn't want him discovered until after the wedding was over, so as not to upset everyone unduly before Brooke was safely married off. But I thought it more likely that our elusive someone had murdered Uncle Rex and didn't want his body found till all the guests had conveniently come and gone. I speculated that the body had been moved for some other more nefarious purpose. This is getting tiresome, I said to the ceiling. Crystal, wake up! I shook her awake. Get up! Can't, she said. Can and will. Do you hear me? Stand up. I need help. He's gone again, I said. Did you see anyone? Did you hear anything? I would love to kiss you, but I just washed my hair. Okay, Betty Davis, would you please wake up? Hang back, Pilgrim. Crystal, now is not the time for your John Wayne imitation. Wake up. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Crystal, please jump ahead 20 years. You are not watching Mr. Rogers. Wake up. I'm begging you. She opened her eyes and looked at me. I, I was out. She said gradually, you mean he's off again? Someone has definitely moved that body, I said. I would love to know who moved him. For a dead man, he sure gets around, said Crystal and closed her eyes. Hashtag, who killed Uncle Rex? Now, at this point, Holly has just given Brooke a big black eye when he says that he doesn't really love her and, and he doesn't want to marry her and he really loves Tabby. So this is a little excerpt of what happens. Someone put a glass of champagne in Brooke's hand. Everyone cheered and raised their glasses as Brooke held his left hand to his face and raised a glass with his right. I'll drink to that, he said. Crystal and I grabbed glasses of champagne. After what I've been through so far today, I am going to enjoy this, I said and took a big drink. Punk rock nurses prevail over evil. We rock. You said it, Tabby, said Crystal. The world is our crab. Or is that our lobster? I think you mean the world is our oyster, I said. Right, that too. Whatever. If it's not those flipping red smelt, or is that sardines? Herrings, I said. Whatever. This sure has turned out to be one hell of a wedding, said Crystal, and downed her champagne in one gulp. Brooke looked around with his good eye. 
This shirt doesn't hurt. Does anyone have a Kleenex? Does anyone have some Advil? Hey, uh, does anyone have some ice? Jason, his brother, picked up the ice bucket off the bar that was set up in the wedding tent and dumped it over Brooke's head. There you go, brother, said Jason. Is that enough ice for you? Hashtag all because of a little kitty. Thank you for listening to the excerpts. And you can read more Mar of Marriage's Murder at your library or get it on Amazon. Thank you. Thank you.